So have you ever had a project that's keeping you awake during the night? One that you are excited to do, but at the same time, you're kind of scared to do it. I feel like that's the sweet spot for a woodworker. That's where you're at the limit of your skills and you have to try something new. That is what this project is for me. So this is one of those projects that's keeping me awake during the night. There are a few steps during this build that I'm really quite nervous about. Luckily though, it started off pretty simple with just four cabinets made of plywood. This will make up the skeleton of the kitchen island and here I am cutting all the parts that I need for the cabinets using the track saw, the miter saw and the table saw. One of the goals of this build was to save money where I could, so the plywood I'm using here is actually quite cheap. It's only $20 per sheet. Most of this plywood will not be visible other than when you pull out the drawers, but I want it to look as good as possible of course, so when cutting these parts I tried to be a bit like, tactical and place the least pretty parts where they would be the least visible. Now, If it's possible I always like to finish the pieces before assembling as it will often leave a nicer finish. So I put a coat of white Osmo wax on all the cabinet parts before assembling it. Now as I said there are four cabinets. Three of them are 60 centimeters wide and one is 40 centimeters. Two of them will have drawers while the one in the back and the secret cabinet in the front will have shelves. Now, I want to take this opportunity and give you all a huge thanks. Not only did we just hit 60,000 subscribers, but now I'm also able to be full time in the shop. The views are going up, the sales on my website are going up, and we have some nice sponsorship deals for the next months. None of this would be possible without you guys, so thank you so much for every view, for every like, comment, subscribe, and of course, purchase on my website. Once I had the cabinets done, I went on to building the base or the toe kick. I used 2x4s that I ripped down to 75mm and built almost like a floor frame. I made sure that the sides of all the cabinets were supported by a 2x4 since these will take most of the weight from the 200kg countertop. Now 200kg is around 440 pounds for you Americans. I then started cutting the parts for the semicircle and for the top and the bottom I cut semicircles out of plywood. Then I used one and a half by three inch studs in between. To cut the semicircles I used a router jig and I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen a jig like this before. It's very easy to use but it is pretty genius because you end up with a perfect round edge. Now, I was not able to go all the way through with my straight router bit, so I had to cut off the excess plywood on the bandsaw, then went over the edge again with a flush trim bit and sanded until it was nice and smooth. I made two of these curved frames, one for the main surface and then a smaller one for the toe kick. Once that was done, I started cutting all the parts for the drawers. There is a total of 8 drawers and I managed to use some leftover plywood for this. There are plenty of ways to build drawers and this version is pretty simple but also quite sturdy. I cut a groove in the drawer sides and the front, then left the back a little bit narrower so that I could slide the drawer bottom in from the back. Once again I finished before assembling and used brad nails to secure the parts.
then started covering up the framing using 9mm plywood. Obviously, 9mm plywood does not naturally bend like this. So I had to cut some grooves that went almost all the way through, leaving roughly 2 to 3 millimeters. I made a cut like this every centimeter, so there was a lot of cutting. But in the end, it was bending really nice, and I just had to be careful not to break it. I applied some water to make the plywood softer and worked my way around the curve, making sure I used plenty of brad nails. Next, I installed the cabinet door for the front cabinet, and this is pretty straightforward. I used a double layer of 12 mm plywood and used two soft close cabinet door hinges. Pretty smooth. And to make sure the door would fit perfectly, I made it a little bit too big and flushed the edge with a flush trim bit. And now it's starting to really look like a kitchen island. So here you can see what the finished surface is going to look like. Oak strips with the plywood backdrop. So I started cutting, sanding and finishing over 100 of these 18 millimeter oak strips. After hours of sanding and finishing, I could now start to install the oak strips using brad nails and a 12mm plywood as distance block. And this was very satisfying. Finally, I set up a laser just to get the middle line of the brad nails straight and again use the same distance block to get the right space. And at this point, I am stoked. This thing is starting to look really good, but my excitement did not last very long. Okay, so we have come to the most nerve wracking part of this build and that is this the countertop. So this is a $1,200 granite countertop. We managed to get it for only $350 because there was a guy who ordered it and then he had to wait a few weeks for the delivery and he didn't want to do that. So he just ordered a new one from another place. Must be nice to have that kind of money. Now the problem with this countertop is that it's too big. So I'm gonna have to make a cut along the long edge here, make it a bit narrower. And then I'm gonna have to make that semicircle to match the rest of the kitchen island. I'm gonna deal with that semicircle afterwards. First, I'm gonna to have to make this cut along the edge here. And of course, I want to make sure that the cut is straight and also that it is 90 degrees. So I have made a jig that hopefully will help me do that. Okay, so I think the best way to do this is to use an angle grinder. And I got one of these blades that's made for cutting uh, like concrete and stone. And then I also made this jig that the angle grinder can slide into. And this will help keep the, the blade at 90 degrees this way and also this way. And then this whole jig fits on top of the Makita track, so, track so that we get a straight line as well. I have no idea if this is going to work. I've never done anything like this before. I think it's going to work. I hope and I pray that it's going to work, but I am. Pretty nervous right now. Now, I would have loved to take this whole countertop 
outside because obviously this is going to get really dusty. But I'm alone in the shop and this is a 250 kilo camera top. So even though I am Norwegian and therefore a certified Viking, I'm just not that strong. But I have covered up this base and hopefully it's going to keep most of the dust from getting into the rest of the shop. And uh, now I think we're ready to try the first cut. Okay, so that went very well, but now we are moving on to the semicircle, and I want to present to you my latest jig. So what you're looking at is the first edition of the Baloney Granite Circle Blaster 3000, patent pending. This thing is a beast, as you can see it's based off of the old jig, but then I've added these parts at the back. So this part will be secured to the countertop, and then the rest of it can be swiveled around and it should hopefully leave a perfect semicircle. Of course, this will secure the 90 degrees, and I think I have to do what I did at the end of cutting the straight line, which is to have this in one place, drive the blade all the way through, then move it a little bit, move the blade all the way through, and I have to go like that through the entire cut. Because if I try to just cut a little bit and go all the way through the circle. The blade is going to bend and uh, maybe break. And so I don't think that's possible. Okay, so let's give it a try. Okay, so that went pretty well again. The, the cut is pretty nice and clean. However, there are a few marks on the top here along the edge and that is from this nut that I wasn't careful enough so that touched down and it left a bit of, you know, like burnt marks and also a slight groove. So I am gonna have to do the cut again, just move the jig backwards a little bit. I can't do that because it is too long now, but I'm gonna do that off camera. You guys don't have to see this again. So I'm gonna jump ahead to some sanding. I'm so surprised at how nice and clean that edge turned out. Somehow I forgot to film some close-ups of the edge, but don't worry, you will get to see some footage of that later in the video. After the camera top was done, I moved on to the drawers and now I ran into a problem. I usually use these soft close drawer slides and I had one extra laying around so I used that when measuring the size of the drawers. Now for some reason the store where I buy these drawer slides have now stopped selling them and there's nowhere for me to buy them. So I had to switch to some other drawer slides but these were a little bit thicker so now the drawers did not longer fit. I figured the easiest fix for this was to make a rabbit using the router where the drawer slides would sit. And luckily this worked just fine and the drawers could finally be installed. But first, of course, I had to install the drawer slides, and this is probably in my top three least favorite activities of all time. So if you have any tips on how to make this more enjoyable, please let me know in the comments. For the drawer fronts, I glued up a big panel of oak boards and plywood and then cut the drawers and the cabinet door afterwards. This ensures that you get a matching grain on the entire front and in my opinion, it just looks a lot better. I didn't want the plywood edge grain to be visible, 
So I glued on a thin strip of oak that I used as edge banding. After installing the drawer fonts and the cabinet door, the kitchen island was ready to be disassembled and then assembled again in the kitchen and we could finally install the countertop. So there we have it guys, I am really happy with how this turned out, especially the countertop, and I've learned a lot through this build. I hope you enjoyed watching it, head over to rbaloney.com for woodworking plans and recommended tools, and if you want to see one of my favorite projects this year, check out this video.